here at Dodger Stadium getting ready for Game 2 of the National League Division Series, but it is also NFL Week 6 against the Carolina Panthers, which means it is crossover time. Rams and Panthers, that's coming up next on Locked on Rams. You are Locked on Rams, your daily Los Angeles Rams podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into another edition of Locked on Panthers and Locked on Rams, the Locked on NFL crossover Thursday with the host of Locked on Panthers, me, Julian Council, and the host of Locked on Rams, Travis Rogers. As always, crossover Thursday is presented by our friends over at Price Picks. Price Picks is so much fun and easy to play. No competing with other players. It's just you versus projections available. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. It can literally take you less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love prize picks, and we know that you will too. First-time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. Travis. Panthers, Rams on Sunday, both teams have kind of struggled, not kind of. Carolina has a brand new head coach, <laughs> but if the Rams vaunted offense has not been what we had seen it last season when they went on to win the Super Bowl, what is the biggest story going into this week six matchup at SoFi Stadium? Yeah, I think that the way that it's changed, Julian, from what we were talking about on Locked on Rams from the end of the Super Bowl through the parade, through the draft, through training camp, through the opening part of the season, and really even after they got absolutely dump trucked by Buffalo on the opening night, it was they're still a pretty good team. They're, they're going to be okay. Buffalo's really good. And now it's changed completely. Now, now I think for the first time, Rams fans are asking themselves the question that is this the dark side of going all in the way that they have for the last few years. Is this the bill finally coming due where your depth is so non-existent where the second you have a couple of injuries to your frontline guys, there is no plugging the holes. You look at what they're dealing with the offensive line. And for me, that's the biggest story going into this one is can they find a way to get this blocked up? Because through the first five games of the season, they haven't, they're going to have their sixth, different starting offensive line in six games when they play the Panthers on Sunday. They have the worst rushing attack in the NFL. They've given up 21 sacks through the first five games of the season. Matthew Stafford has more interceptions than he does touchdown passes, and they're continuing to lose guys. David Edwards gets put on the IR uh, earlier this week. He's down for four more weeks, so it's actually getting worse than getting better. Yeah, I saw going into this game, I was reading Jordan Rodriguez from The Athletic, who actually used to cover the Carolina Panthers, now covers the Rams, and was good at checking on some of her work. And she was talking about that there might be the fourth starting center in six games for the Rams on Sunday. It's that bad? Yeah, so Brian Allen was the starting center, and then Coleman Shelton, who is your starting right guard because Logan Bruss got hurt in camp. Now he's your second center, and then he goes down. Jeremiah Colone goes in. He's your third center, and a player that they just called up from the practice squad who they acquired from the Baltimore Ravens in the offseason who – Really is was he? It's not even showing up on on depth charts. He could be your starting center come Sunday afternoon at SoFi. It has been an absolute nightmare up front. Well, here in Carolina, we certainly do not take lightly investing in the offensive line, which I know the Rams did this past offseason, signing three guys. Now one of them, Austin Corbett's back yeah. here in Carolina as a starting right guard. But last season in Carolina. 14 different starting offensive line combinations. Mm. You can talk about how bad Sam Darnold was and bringing in Cam Newton, PJ Walker. If your own line's not right. You have no chance, even if you are the defending Super Bowl champs like the Rams. Well, here locally in Charlotte and Carolina, we know that uh, the big story is there's a new head coach in sure. town. As Steve Wilkes, who was a secondary coach, now has been elevated to interim. Matt Rule fired after an 11-27 and record through 38 games. Things didn't go great here. And I was someone who vowed to Rule to come back for another season thinking, all right, let's fix the – Let's try and find another quarterback in Baker Mayfield. He's arguably been the worst quarterback in the league through five weeks, and he's also (laughs) injured and unlikely to play on Sunday. Although Steve Wilkes did say on Wednesday that Baker did look like it might be a chance for him. He's still in a walking boot, but he said there might be a chance that he plays. They're prepared for P.J. Walker to get the start on Sunday as he received the vast majority of the one snaps 
at Wednesday on Wednesday at practice where they're actually in pads, a switch up from what they've typically been doing, where they've been in pads on Thursday and not on Wednesday. So they switched it up to get the intensity. But hmm. Steve Wilkes now here as the interim head coach, he has 12 games to prove himself. He's from Charlotte. Went to App State University, had coached here between 2012 and 17 under Ron Rivera, had one year out west at Arizona before getting fired, which is a part of the lawsuit that he's now having with the NFL and the Cardinals. So that's the big story here. Fans have a new head coach, but yesterday's problems are still today's problems. Can they overcome them? That's my question, really. Yeah, like you said, Julian, I think that like you're talking about, the top stories for the Panthers are all really good news for the Rams, and it's coming at exactly the right time. They're going through a coaching change. They might be playing you know, potentially a third-string quarterback in P.J. Walker. Um and just the turmoil that comes along with the coaching change. Now, there, sometimes you'll get that bounce that when you make the change, the team kind of rallies a little bit along the way. Um, the familiarity factor for the Rams, like you mentioned, Steve Wilkes was with the Cardinals for years, the head coach. And, you know, that's the one team that the Rams seem to really just thrive against. Uh, even this year, it's their, by far their best game of the year. So I don't know if there's any familiarity with him and what he does. Um, but it's a big one for the Rams because if, if this doesn't work, then the question of what will becomes a real one because the the second half of the schedule for the Rams is it's a Super Bowl schedule. You know, when you win the Super Bowl, you get the schedule that Super Bowl champions get. And yeah. they've got road games in Tampa. They've got road games in Kansas City, Green Bay, New Orleans. So that's all in the second half of the season. So if they're going to make a run back to the playoffs, this is a this is a must have it for the Rams. Yeah, and same thing for Carolina. If they're going to bounce back at all, they have the Rams this week and then they have next week against Tampa at home. It's three straight weeks. The 49ers last week of the final, the, what the final four mm -hmm. in the, in, in the NFC playoffs. And I think the three, the last three representatives from the NFC in the Super Bowl. So the Panthers, they've got a tough schedule and they had four of their first five games at home in those games. They went one in three. So mm -hmm. home has not been a good side for them, but maybe go down the road, getting away from all the chaos of a coaching change might be beneficial to this team. I don't know though. P.J. Walker, he is 2-0 as a starter, if that's even a stat you want to put out there. So it will be uh, it'll be a tough task for them on Sunday, especially with a great defense that the Rams have and really two anemic offenses, Carolina and Los Angeles. Which I, 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 wonder, I wonder, Julian, that the the Matt Rule experiment, was this a classic? Because it, like, it, sometimes it works out. Like Pete Carroll, it works out. Jimmy Johnson, it works out. You take a guy from the college ranks, you put him in. And they yeah. thrive. And then there are Steve Spurriers. There are other examples of a, you know, Greg Schiano, college coaches that come in and face plant. Was he in the second category? Was this just a bad fit from the jump? Uh, I don't know if it was a bad fit from the jump. That's what I was going to say now, considering he's been fired after 38 games. And David Tepper, the owner here in Carolina, talked about it being a five year plan when he hired Matt Rule. He didn't even make it two and a half years into that alleged, supposed five year plan. Mm -hmm. It's yes, it's somewhat of a bad fit, but also he never got the quarterback position right. Teddy Bridgewater came in here. I was reading earlier today that Charles Robinson from Yahoo said that the owner, David Tepper, was turned off by the amount of money they spent on Teddy Bridgewater, which actually led to him slow playing the deal for Matthew Stafford. So mm. Stafford in part is a ram because David Tepper wanted more background on his back injury and was not ready to sign off on that because he did not trust Matt Rule because of the first decision to bring in Teddy Bridgewater. That lands it with Sam Darnold, who was the worst starting quarterback in the league up until that point. And we saw it yet again last year, despite the injury. And then so far this season, Baker Mayfield hasn't been great. So yeah, Matt Rule, probably more of a college coach, but certainly the inability to find a quarterback was his demise, in my opinion, here in Carolina more than anything. So we'll see uh, if that will change as far as the energy levels. And we saw a year ago when Sam Darnold went out with an injury and Cam Newton came back for what was a really fun 10 days with that Arizona Cardinals game on the road. The entire energy on that sideline was completely different. So maybe the Carolina Panthers can carry that kind of momentum to Sunday when they face off at, in L.A. at SoFi Stadium. Yeah, I love the word energy because that's what has been lacking for the Rams all season long. That, that, that buzz that they had last year, that little spark, that little thing that makes you excited about your team. It was there for, you know, the entire run last year. Even when they weren't playing well, it's like, yeah, they're, they're okay. They're, they're making some mistakes, but the mistakes felt fixable. This team, the, the, the problems they have may not be fixable. And that little extra, that intangible thing just has not been here yet. No, it hasn't been here either in Carolina. So both teams hoping to see that energy spark on Sunday afternoon at SoFi Stadium, 4.05 West Coast time at 1 o'clock locally here in Charlotte. When we take a quick pause here, Travis can come back. We'll talk about some of these key matchups to look forward to on Sunday as the Panthers and Rams face off in week six. It's yet another edition of the Locked On NFL Crossover Thursday. All right, Travis, here's a sports analogy for you. 
When it comes to burglars, your home is like an end zone and you need the absolutely strongest defense you can muster. This is why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who always have your back so you always know your home is safe. Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and outside your home, smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that instantly detect fires, floods, and other threats for your home. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on NFL. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free that simply safe.com slash locked on NFL to learn more. That's simply safe.com slash locked on. There's no safe like simply safe. Okay. Back here, locked on NFL crossover Thursday sponsored by our friends over at prize picks, Julian council, host of locked on Panthers, Travis Rogers, host of locked on Rams. Travis, we're hoping to see some sort of energy on Sunday. I'm concerned that it's two really good defenses, against two really bad offenses. Now, the Panthers are just bad because, well, it doesn't seem like the quarterback position is fixed. The Rams have had injuries, and they've had other sort of issues. What are some of the matchups you're looking at from from, as a, from the Rams' perspective that could help them win this game on Sunday? Well, I think there's a couple of things, and, and not to go over something that we just talked about, Julian, but the offensive line is number one. They have to find a way to get some stuff blocked up. And more specifically, let's, for the, the sake of the conversation, say that they're better – then I think you can start to evaluate Matthew Stafford and the matchup that he has against that pretty good Carolina defense because so far what the Rams have done through the first five weeks of the season has been really wildly inconsistent. And and that's probably a generous assessment of what it been because inconsistent means there's some good and some bad. And there really has been very, very little good at what they've been to do or been able to do. Um, for me, I, I, I can't figure out if Matthew Stafford is playing well or not. The, the numbers say that he isn't. The interception rate says that he isn't. It's, you know, All of the advanced metrics are saying no, but I don't care if it's Joe Montana or Tom Brady or anybody else. When you've got a second and a half to make a decision before Vaughn Miller or Micah Parsons or whoever else that they played against this year, Bosa, that are just, you know, they're in your face, you're going to have all sorts of problems. And one of the ways and one of the matchups that, that I think – the Rams can try to engage in is trying to find a way to get Allen Robinson involved. And, and it, it, I'll go back a little bit here, Julian, when yeah. the Rams were coming out of their best season where they had Todd Gurley as an MVP candidate early on in Sean McVay's career. And then they came back for that next year and, and Gurley never really got going. It was always this, Hey, when's Gurley going to get going? And, and it just never happened. He never was that guy that we'd seen Previously, all Rams fans and people that cover this team were Allen Robinson's going to kill it. You've got the uh, his best quarterback of his life, the best head coach of his life, an offensive scheme that's going to set up really well for him, and a number one wide receiver in Cooper Cup who's going to draw a ton of attention. This this should be an opportunity for him to go absolutely wild. And to say that he had he, he's been non-existent, and he can't even say that he's been bad. He has been. He, I think he's only caught nine passes so far this season through wow. five games. He's under 100 yards. He's only had one touchdown. It was early in the Atlanta game, and it really was not a, you know, it's a touchdown. It matters, but it didn't swing the game in any meaningful way. They have to get him involved, um, regardless of who's defending him. you got to find a way to get him involved, because otherwise you're asking Cooper Cup to catch 15, 16 passes a game, get in the end zone a couple times, and that's just not sustainable. That's wild to me. You said nine receptions in five games so far. We spent so much time back when he was a bear saying if he ever had a quarterback that he would be able to show that he's one of the top receivers in the NFL. And we hear a lot of that here in Carolina with DJ Moore, who I'm Mm -hmm. certain the Rams would probably be interested in if Carolina ends up doing a fire sale and trying to recoup some draft picks. I know for me with Carolina, I'm looking at trying to stop Aaron Donald. You you can't stop Aaron Donald, but that's the first guy. When I look at that Rams defense, what they already – porous offense the Carolina Panthers have they've got to find a way and I saw last week against Dallas he lined up as a defensive end for one of the plays against the 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 Dallas Cowboys rookie offensive tackle yep that concerns me Iki Iquanu has come leaps and bounds since week one where he struggled against Miles Garrett Aaron Donald's better than Miles Garrett he's in that same category of just game wreckers 
but there's just not anyone in the league quite like Aaron Donald. So that concerns me if he goes out wide and lines up against Ike Iquano, or if he stays inside against a guy like Pat Elfline, who's had a better year as a center, but still he can be a liability for the Carolina Panthers. So stopping Aaron Donald is the first thing on the top of my mind heading to Sunday. Yeah, they'll move him around a lot. They'll use him in this traditional spot inside, you know, over the center in that A gap right there, but they will line him up on the edge sometimes. Um, you're, you're right, Julian. I still think, I, not only do I think Aaron Donald's the best defensive player in the league right now, I think he's on a very short list of maybe the best defensive player in the history of the NFL. I think he's that good. But when you double him and triple him, he becomes, instead of being Superman, he's, you know, Superman light. He's just, he's still really good, but you can deal with it. Somebody other than Aaron Donald has to put some pressure on that quarterback. Last year it was Vaughn Miller. We've seen some other guys, whether it's Michael Brockers and Dominican Sue. We've seen it through the cycle of guys that that he's played with. That Dante Fowler uh, was with the Rams for a couple of seasons. He was able to do it. But so far this season, Leonard Floyd has been the guy that you're hoping has been able to do it, and he hasn't. It just really has not been. It's either Aaron Donald, occasionally Bobby Wagner or no pressure at all, they're going to have to find a second guy. That surprised me that the Rams have not been able to get pressure this season. And Carolina's actually kind of in that same boat. You talk about finding a second guy. So far this season, the Panthers only have eight sacks. Four of those come from Brian Burns, who was a pro bowler last season. And also on the other side, had Hassan Reddick, who's been fantastic back home with the Philadelphia Eagles, who sit at 5-1 and one, look like the best team in the NFC at this point in time. That has not emerged in Carolina. We knew going to the year, that the Panthers need to go out and try and find someone opposite of Brian Burns to help with that pass rush. They're ninth in the NFL so far with pressure rate. They just haven't gotten home. And I look at the Rams offensive line that's been banged up. I know Joe Nopeboom and both, both him and Havenstein, the two tackles, have really struggled. I think they've given up five sacks and three sacks respectively, so eight total. If and Brian Burns, mind, Julian, those are yeah. their only two guys that are their projected starters. The wow. guys on the inside of that line, both guards and center, they're third, and in the case of the center, fourth string players. They're not even the backups. They're third and fourth string guys. Your two first stringers in Havenstein and Nopum, like you mentioned, those are the guys that you would like to at least lean on, and they haven't been able to do that either. And that's that's going to be a key to victory for Carolina. Brian Burns is going to have to have a field day, and anyone else who can step up, like a Marquise Haynes, a situational pass rusher, if he can do something possibly. And even with the interior, where it's well, you're starting like your it might be the fourth different center, and also like the third different like left or right guard. Just the, yep. the amount of combinations in the interior of the offensive line. Derek Brown, the first rounder out of Auburn back in 2020, is finally looking like that seventh overall pick. He's shown in the last couple of weeks. If he can be a game wrecker inside, same thing with Matt Ioannidis, who has a history of being a pretty good interior pass rusher back when he was with Washington. That's how Carolina can find success on Sunday against the Rams. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> I think it really could be a game where if a defensive play, a, a strip sack, an interception, a scoop and score could be the difference because I have a hard time envisioning either of these two offenses – marching up and down the field and putting together, you know, eight, nine, 10, 12 play drives and scoring 27, 30 points. This feels like a game that could be played uh, in, in the teens. This feels like a game where a turnover, a sack, maybe a field position, trade punts for a few minutes. Uh, it's yeah. going to come down to one of those weird deals. It, it could be ugly. And I can guarantee you one thing, PJ Walker, while he might be two and zero as a starter, He's always turned the football over in those games. He had two red zone interceptions against Detroit back in 2020, a game where the Panthers defense shut out the Lions. The Panthers defense has stepped up when P.J. Walker has gone out there and started. They had a couple of turnovers last year against the Cardinals. Now, P.J. Walker also threw an interception. So he's probably going to give one to the Rams. It's going to be important, though, for the Panthers defense to go out there and get one of their own, maybe even two, instead of this offense with the short field, if they're going to have any sort of chance at scoring against that Rams unit. Rams secondary banged up too. Outside of Jalen Ramsey, you're missing Jordan Fuller. You're starting uh, safety. You're missing Taylor Rapp, potentially, who's got a rib injury. Troy Hill, the guy they brought over from Cleveland during the season to be their second corner to replace Darius Williams. He's down. It's just that everything that could go wrong for the Rams injury-wise has. Yeah, and also just update with the uh, Panthers secondary, J.C. Horn. He's dealing with a hip slash rib issue. That's what Steve Wilkes talked about on Wednesday. He left early in uh, Sunday's game against the 49ers. We'll see what his availability is. Xavier Woods, the starting safety, had an issue with his hamstring. He was back at practice on Wednesday. Jeremy Chen, unfortunately, is on IR for the next three weeks at least, so he's not eligible to play. So the Panthers also look banged up in the secondary. Might be something to help out the Rams. Both teams dealing with injuries, so it could be an ugly one on Sunday. And We'll get into it here shortly, Travis, as we'll give our game predictions and our score predictions and 
look at what this could end up being on Sunday afternoon. But before that, let's talk about our friends over at Price Picks, who, of course, every Thursday are a sponsor for our, N- our Locked On NFL Cross over Thursday episodes. So how does Price Picks work? You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Price Picks projection, you can win up to ten times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you can watch, including the NFL. NBA, Major League Baseball, NHL, PGA Tour, college football, even NASCAR, tennis, cricket, if you're into that. Who Injuries isn't? Can... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Who doesn't love cricket? It's actually, it's what the second most popular sport in the world. So many That's people right. watch cricket. So check out Price Picks for that. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, safe, and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and up north to our friends in Canada. So download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. So, what that means is if you deposit $100, Price Picks will give you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match of up to $100 when you download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com. Okay, so let's look at this matchup. We looked at the matchups, we talked about the storylines. Let's give our predictions. I'm not much of a guy who likes to give scoreline predictions, but I will tell you who I think is going to win or lose this game <laughs> on Sunday as the Panthers come at one and four. The Rams, I would say, a disappointing two and three sure. for the defending Super Bowl champs. And the 49ers might be – I mean, they're, it's only, they only have a one-game lead, but they certainly look like maybe the class of the NFC West at this point in time. Heading into Sunday, how are you feeling? Is this the bounce-back game for the Rams before they get to their bye week, or do they suffer a shocking loss to the Panthers team with the interim head coach? I think, and, and, and I am really reluctant to say things like this, Julian, because I think that it's, it's cliche and it's almost always hyperbole, but I believe it's true in this case. I think the Rams season turns on Sunday. I, I, I think wow. that if, depending on the result of the game, you're going to get one of three things. If the Rams win, here's, here's the, the, the story they can tell themselves. We played like, you know what, for six weeks, but we're three and three. We're still in it. We're only a game behind the 49ers, and maybe San Francisco loses this weekend and you're tied. That it went as badly as you can. The Rams have their bye week next week. We got a bye to get as healthy as we're going to get, and then we can kind of hit the gas going in the second half and let the chips fall where they may. That's the best-case scenario. Win the game. Whether it's 10-9, to whether it's 35-32, to I don't think it matters. Win the game. You can tell yourself that story. The other two stories, the worst case scenario is you lose to a one and four team that's got a third string quarterback that just fired their coach that's going nowhere. Your season's up in smoke. It, it, it just it is what it is. And Super Bowl hangover, call it what you want. That th- there is no spinning two and four with a loss to Carolina at home under these circumstances. The other one that's kind of splitting it there is you win the game, but it doesn't look very good. You go out there and maybe, like we were talking about a minute ago, maybe you get a late turnover and it's just that Carolina is a little bit worse than the Rams as opposed to the Rams playing well. You don't get much healthier in the break. You come out of the bye week next week and San Francisco stomps you for the eighth time in a row in the regular season. And then we're right back to what we were talking about. But if they can win, if they can look halfway decent, if they can get a little healthier in the bye week after that, I think that maybe – Sean, I'm a huge believer in Sean McVay. I think he's a wonderful head coach. I think he really is a unicorn. I think he's one of these few guys that can make a big difference. He showed up after Jeff Fisher and instantly changed the culture of that organization. This was a boring, flat, uninteresting, uninspired group of team uh, teammates, and he changed it like that. They've been to the Super Bowl twice in five years. They've had no losing records. I believe in him but you can only do so much with three third string offensive linemen. There's only so much you can scheme around. They have to win on Sunday. If they do, the season keeps going. If they don't, it's real close to calling it a wrap. It almost feels like on Sunday, whose backups perform better will dictate who wins the game. And especially for Carolina. And you talk about PJ Walker. He's not really a third string quarterback, Travis going into training camp. They had Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold and the rookie out of Ole Miss, Matt Corral, Matt Mm. Corral, broke his foot like pj walker was gonna be the odd man out when he entered camp and he actually was asked about that on wednesday and he said i did think about that for a week how i probably wasn't gonna be here and you have to move past that he said i was gonna look forward to my reps and opportunities in the preseason and 
show people that, hey, I, I think I can play. I know I can play. So he actually was the fourth string guy. But wow. once Matt Corral went out in second game of the preseason with a list frank injury that ended his rookie year before he even got started, then Darnold went out with a high ankle sprain, which he's been out for seven weeks now in a preseason finale against Buffalo. It was just down to Baker and P.J. Hmm. And here in week six, it's now the P.J. Walker show, which is insane for Carolina to be in a situation and really further highlights just how bad the quarterback situation is here in Carolina. But what we've known in the past is – P.J. Walker's played well, and when he's well, he's played well enough to win, and the defense has helped lift him up in those situations against Detroit in 2020 and last year against Arizona. So I do expect the Panthers' defense to come out flying to be able to make some plays and to give P.J. Walker an opportunity. The problem is, like I said earlier, yesterday's problems are still today's problems. I look at this Panthers roster in totality, special teams, is much better than what it was a year ago. Now they have Johnny Hecker, which might be a revenge game for him, if there could be a punter revenge game after they <laughs> gave up a pin, uh, gave up on him in L.A. I'm sure he'll be fired up. Special teams is much better. After one of the worst units in the NFL a year ago, the offensive line is fixed. They have weapons at wide receiver. The defense is one of the best units, but the quarterback just has not been good enough, so it's hard for me to feel like the Panthers can go out here and win this game. I would not be surprised if they do. If they carry over that that momentum as far as, okay, bunker mentality, I don't know if you can call it momentum, but bunker mentality, let's block out the noise, and that energy can come for one week. Can they sustain it for the other 11 games after that? I doubt it, but maybe we see that on Sunday afternoon against the Rams. I don't think they'll win this game, but I think it will be a low-scoring, close loss for the Panthers, probably something in the range of 13-17. Yeah, I think if anybody gets to 20, they're in really good shape. I think 17 may be enough along the way. And you said something, Julian, that I, I forgot to mention that, you know, another maybe thing that Carolina could take advantage of. The Rams have had two punts blocked in the first five games of the season. And, 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 and right up the middle, too. These are not guys coming off the edge, not guys that are just getting, you know, the, the tip of their finger on it. Guys that are basically taking it off of Riley Dixon's foot. They're just, it's, they're just an absolute mad scramble back to the punter. So, you know, it could be one of those, a special teams gaff, a snafu, a block punt, a block kick, and that could change this game too. Yeah, the Panthers are going to need every single break they can get, and I mean, the Rams might need it as well if they want to move the football on Sunday. Could possibly be an ugly one, but an important one for the Rams to try and get back on track and for the Panthers to try to build some sort of momentum. Christian McCaffrey still healthy. Trying to run the ball against Los Angeles is probably their best path to trying to win and move the ball on Sunday against the Rams. Week six, Panthers at the Rams, four o'clock out west, one o'clock here locally in Charlotte. Again, it's been a locked on NFL crossover Thursday edition, sponsored by our friends over at Prize Picks. I'm Julian Council. Follow me on Twitter at Julian Council. He's Travis Rogers, the host of Locked On Rams. Follow him on Twitter at Travis Rogers. And also check him out in the morning on ESPN 710 LA. To give you all the uh, good news going on with the Rams and of course the Dodgers. Yeah, are in go the Dodgers. We got we got a big one coming up against the Padres again, and hopefully they'll uh, they'll keep going. We need to have something to keep us interested in uh, once football season is over. Well, you got the hey, it's a great sports town. You got the Lakers coming up. USC football is good. UCLA is also yeah, undefeated. We can't say that here in Charlotte. Lamelo Ball is out for at least two weeks, so I we're know. we're going through it right now with the Panthers <laughs> and the Hornets. Who season starts uh, next Wednesday on October 19th? But it's been fun talking to you, Travis. Skin to my listeners. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Julian Council. We got the weekly Friday mailbag either at me or DM me. And everyone else who checks out Lockdown Rams, continue to check out Travis Rogers wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts, and you can check us both out on YouTube. Just be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. In the meantime, take care, be safe, and we'll talk to you guys on Friday.